to Paul Matter, who is the CTO and co-founder of Power to Hydrogen LLC. It's a company focused on the commercialization of systems for hydrogen generation and energy storage. Uh, and obviously the hydrogen market is, has gotten a lot of traction, at least for those of us follow the sector in the last few, in, uh, recently. So Paul, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Rob. So uh, Power to Hydrogen is working on a reversible fuel cell technology. And probably many of you are wondering, what is a reversible fuel cell? So in simple terms, a reversible fuel cell can take electricity and water and generate hydrogen gas, but it can also be run in reverse. It can take hydrogen gas and generate electricity. So that has huge application in a renewable energy future. Um, and that's something we all wanna to get to. We wanna to get to the point where our electrical grid is 100% powered by renewable energy. But the challenge is the wind isn't always blowing and the sun's not always shining. So you need energy storage. Um, batteries can provide some of that energy storage. They're particularly good for providing an hour or two of energy storage, but for 24 hours of not having wind or you know, a cloudy day um, or seasonal shifts uh, with renewable energy, uh, batteries just don't cut it because you need um, so, so many batteries to last 24 or more hours of energy storage. Um, and in addition to long duration energy storage, there are also many applications, for instance, for like transportation where batteries may not be a good fit. Um, again, batteries may be a good fit for uh, passenger vehicles, but heavy duty applications that are operating many hours a day or, or for more than a day, such as uh, trains, shipping, um, you have uh, forklifts that operate around the clock in distribution centers, uh, buses and heavy duty trucks. Uh, batteries, again, don't provide a good solution for those applications. Uh, one potential good solution for long duration energy storage is hydrogen, uh, because with hydrogen, you can add additional hours of energy storage at a very low cost. Um, a tank of hydrogen only costs about $10 per kilowatt hour, which is about 20 times less what it would cost to add incremental battery storage. And then for heavy duty applications, hydrogen is also a good fit because it has very high energy density. Um, compressed hydrogen gas can provide about five times the energy density of a battery. Um, and can refill instantly. So hydrogen is a good potential solution for applications of long duration energy storage and heavy duty use. Uh, but the problem is right now, the technologies for producing green hydrogen are too expensive. And it's really the fact that the equipment is expensive. And if you're trying to capitalize on low cost renewables, then that equipment isn't utilized um, throughout the course of the day. It's probably only used less than a third of the day um, if you're taking excess renewables to make the hydrogen. So the solution we're working on at uh, Power to Hydrogen, we're calling it the clean energy bridge. And what it is, it's a reversible fuel cell that will produce hydrogen when electricity is cheap and store that hydrogen in tanks. And then when electricity is needed, you can take that hydrogen and send it back to the device to generate electricity. And the way we differ from existing technologies for generating hydrogen is that we have that dual use, which is going to increase the utilization of the equipment. It's gonna both produce useful hydrogen, but it can also provide backup power um, or resiliency to a microgrid. And it can also provide peak shape peak shaving if you're using it for a facility, for instance, that runs forklift trucks. Um, in addition to having that dual functionality, our reversible fuel cell system can generate hydrogen at high pressure. And so this is gonna differentiate us from other technologies in the mobility market, because in the mo hydrogen mobility market, you need high pressure hydrogen. And the current equipment to do that is a mechanical compressor that's expensive and, and often fails. So really the value proposition our technology is providing is that it's going to increase the return on investment for green hydrogen installations. And it will do that by providing relatively low cost equipment that has dual functionality. So you can generate revenue um, when electricity is expensive and instead of having your equipment just sit idle. Like you would with a traditional electrolyzer. Um, 
So we're looking at several different markets uh, for this technology. Uh, currently, we're working with NASA for remote energy storage, and, and NASA really requires the most remote of all energy storage. They're interest, interested in this technology for storage of energy on the moon because the nights up on the moon can last up to 350 hours. And uh, that would be a lot of batteries to store that much energy versus just a, a tank of compressed hydrogen. Um, a second potential application is fleets. So, you know, uh, either forklift fleets at warehouses or bus fleets are potentially good applications. Um, we're working with the Stark Area Regional Transit Authority. It's a local transit authority here in Ohio. Um, they have 100 buses and 10 of those buses are powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Um, they're currently having that hydrogen shipped in uh, from a steam reforming plant, but they would like that to be green hydrogen produced on site from solar panels that they already have installed. And they want eventually to get to the, by the end of this decade, get to all 100 buses being powered by hydrogen. They're looking for green hydrogen solutions and they are, they like our approach because not only can we provide that hydrogen on site, we can also provide backup power. Um, and currently they're using a megawatt scale diesel generator to provide backup power for their building, but also their critical infrastructure um, to communicate with buses and, and take video recordings on all the buses. So we can provide that dual functionality for their fleet. And we like this application um, because SARTA is an early adopter, but there's hundreds of other bus fleets in California and Europe, and they're currently struggling with figuring out how to meet the zero emission standards that are being set by governments. And if we can prove this out with an early adopter like SARTA, um, they aren't competing with those other bus fleets in California and Europe, for instance. So our solution can be replicated very quickly. Uh, but ultimately where we want this technology to end up is for utility scale, hydrogen gas generation and energy storage. And so uh, we've just started last week a project with Shell through their Game Changer program where we're gonna start to look at some of these utility applications. And one particularly interesting application could be offshore wind and uh, generation of hydrogen and energy storage from offshore wind. Um, so really I'd like to you know, thank my team for helping us accelerate the development of this technology. You know, we've demonstrated it with internal prototypes, but we're looking to take that in this next step um, out of the lab and in demonstrations and pilots uh, that we will be working on over the next 18 months. Um, I'd be happy to talk more about our business plot, business model and business plans um, with anyone if they want to contact me afterwards offline. Um, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions now. But I guess the last thing I did want to mention though, ultimately, you know, we've talked to a lot of renewable energy um, developers who have looked at green hydrogen and they've looked at long duration energy storage and they say the numbers just don't pencil and we think ultimately that's what this solution can bring. It'll make um, long duration energy storage and green hydrogen add to the return on investment for a renewable energy project instead of detract from that investment and, and that's what we want to deliver here in the next decade. So thanks for your attention. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks Paul. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and you, you touched on this a little bit, but a couple of the questions that came in uh, was on active deployments or, or what's there. You're in pilot deployments now, or can you give a little more sense of where your, your technology is in play or what stage it's in? Yeah, so we are a early stage company. We've demonstrated the, the technology in the lab. Um, we've had a couple grants um, from the Department of Energy and NASA, and we're raising a seed, right, seed round right now to um, demonstrate our first uh, prototype for remote energy storage applications. And we're signing up pilots uh, right now as well. One would be at SARTA, but we're looking for additional pilots um, you know, at warehouses or other fleet applications. Thanks, that's helpful. And, uh, and it's not necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, a location specific technology. You're just initial deployments and pilots are here closer to home in, in the US. But uh, well, I guess NASA would be definitely yeah. outside <laughs> the US. So. Uh, uh, if you want to tell us a little bit more about that or some of the you know, thoughts behind, behind that, uh, I'd be interested to hear. Sure. Yeah, you know, we're, we're definitely looking um, outside of just the U.S. You know, there's a lot more interest um, or a lot more attention for hydrogen in Europe right now. Um, so we are looking for partners in Europe. Um, 
and you know, for instance, in Germany, um, they've already have a plan for high, green hydrogen as part of their uh, renewable energy future. Um, this technology could also be, potentially be very useful um, on islands. Um, Japan, it, there's some interest as well in this technology. We just were accepted into the Japan Energy Challenge um, within the last couple of weeks. So we're gonna be connecting with partners there. But yeah, we are looking outside of the US, um, particularly any area where hydrogen is valued, you know, that's where we're gonna have an advantage compared to other forms of energy, long duration energy storage like redox flow batteries or, you know, just compressed air and, and the other options. Um, so those are typically, you know, Europe and Japan, those are the areas right now where hydrogen is the most valued and, and those could be good markets for us. Uh, that's great. And also congrats on uh, getting into both Shell Game Changers and, the, and that program for Japan. I know, especially for the Shell program, that's a, that's a good validation of your technology or the prog progress you've been making. So congrats to you for that. Um, and I think you kind of touched on this a little bit and uh, it, from the questions uh, that are here, uh, you know, obviously there's other energy storage uh, and battery chemistries out there. Um, you know, can you speak to the applications of, you, know, you mentioned your, your kind of holy grail, your goal is real grid-based long-term energy storage. Um, maybe speak to how you might, you think your costs will compare on that front or, you know, some of the other applications where, you know, obviously lithium ion or some other things you mentioned, vehicles maybe don't make the most sense unless it's a large fleet vehicle. Uh, you know, some of those things and, and where you're driving the market and where you think you'll be the most cost competitive. Yep. Pump hydro, you know, is one example for long-term storage, I guess, as a competitor. Sure. Yeah. So for utilities, you know, um, grid storage, it would really, you know, depend on their uses for large amounts of hydrogen. So, you know, we want to see, for instance, hydrogen be adopted for heavy duty trucks so that there's a market um, for the hydrogen. And one advantage that our technology would have is that we can play in both markets. Um, so if there's more demand for hydrogen, you know, you get uh, more revenue from selling the hydrogen rather than just using it to, to store electricity. Um, but, but obviously, yeah, the demand for hydrogen, uh, we'd like to see that go up. You know, obviously it's already being adopted for some fleet applications um, and warehouses with hydrogen uh, powered forklifts. Uh, but we see it continually be adopted, for instance, for buses, um, heavy duty trucks, you know, shipping. Um, and, and that's, as those adoptions occur, that's where we're gonna have a big advantage since we can both provide fuel or electricity depending on whichever is, gives you the best return uh, at that point in time. So, so and that, that speaks to your value pr proposition, uh, the dual use case, uh, which you'd mentioned. And you'd also touch on something which I know comes up a lot on the, the compressor side. Uh, can, and that was, as I started jotting down notes, that was the first thing about compressors and you're like, oh, that's one of our, our advantages. Can you speak to a little bit more how much, uh, how much of a compression advantage you have relative to standard technology or what's there? Right, so standard technology right now is about 30 bar is the pressure that's achieved with uh, like a PEM electrolyzer. Uh, most hydrogen uh, you'd want to store at at least 200 bar. So to get it to a storage pressure, it, um, you would need uh, some at least one stage of compression there. And so 200 bar is currently where the hydrogen is shipped over the road um, or delivered. Um, but after it's shipped, then it gets compressed um, again to 350 bar or 700 bar um, on site at a hydrogen fueling station. So one of the things, you know, for instance, Shell's working on higher pressure delivery to cut back on the delivery cost. Um, so if we can, if we can fit in up to 350 or 700 bar, that's when you can start eliminating compressors altogether. Um, to this point, we've, we can, um, our technology has a, a particular design that enables us to go up to potentially 30 times higher than the existing membrane technology, which would put us at the 900 bar range, which would be as high as you need to go for some of these mobility applications. Um, one thing we're working on right now with our prototype is demonstrating um, that much higher pressure. You know, we wanna to get to it, we need to be at least uh, 30 bar initially to fit in with existing systems. So we can already do that. Um, but with 
with some of our current work, we're looking to go to 200 bar or possibly even up to 900 bar. All right, that's great, Paul. And keeping us on time as Peter demands, uh, it is time for our next speaker. I just want to thank you. And uh, you know, obviously your contact information will be uh, available to everyone else. Any last uh, parting words? Uh, and thanks for joining us. Yep, yep. Thanks everybody for your attention. And like I said, we're hoping to make uh, green hydrogen part of the renewable energy future. So thanks. Great, thanks, Paul. Thank you.